to people, situations. But to keep in mind that we're here for purpose. And God has a purpose for us. And to Madam Mother, we touch you on that. And as a witness, we are the we are the so-called witness. And uh, the Lord that told me tonight to remind us of what type of witness we ought to be. Um, a lot of times we just caught up in the wrong kind of witness. But we have a witness that the Lord is speaking of. And uh, unfortunately for some, and fortunately for the kingdom, you know, it ain't us. We ain't the witness. So I'm not going to do too much preliminary because we're going to get in and out of here on this word tonight. But I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I thank you for your your teachings. I thank you for understanding and wisdom. I thank you for a heart that's after you, one that the love of God flows through. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you that you have opened up my eyes to see that in you, Lord, do I have my being. And that everything good about me is only because of you. I thank you for your love and your kindness toward me. I thank you for my family, my friends. I even thank you for my foes because they remind me of the work that needs to be done. Keep me, Lord, in perfect peace. Keep my heart and my mind. In spite of all that may be going on, keep my heart and mind toward you. Maintain my focus. Remind me of my purpose. And let your plan be fulfilled in my life. In the lives of your people. In all of those that were the voice that, of the sound of my voice. Let them know that you are, Lord God, their purpose. And that you have a purpose for their lives to be fulfilled for the kingdom. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Okay. Uh, I I don't really have any announcements for us uh, as far as WCT. So um, just coming Sunday, the Lord's will, we will be in the house. Um, this is the um, last Sunday of the month. We are in our book spiritual warfare and the victory that we have in it if that we've been talking about that we fight from a place of victory we already have the victory so we fight from that place i just love it can't let it go Beatrice ain't let it go because we've been fighting a fight that <laughs> we've been fighting it the wrong way so the Lord just reminded us that we are not fighting for victory. We are fighting from victory. So we've just been holding on to that. And with that being said, tonight's message is a true testament to what the word of God says. Um, when it comes to us as believers, as a, a witness. And uh, I've been um, thinking about this word, the believer. Because the believer doesn't necessarily have to be someone who is in right standing with God. A believer is someone who knows that Jesus is real. And that what Jesus did on the cross was true. But if you don't accept that, you're just a spectator to what is true. You will believe it to what is true, but until you take hold of it and grasp it for yourself... You just suspected to what is true. And so I've just been listening to that thought because the enemy is a believer. The devil is a believer. He knows this to be true. But he is not one that belongs to the kingdom of God. So make sure that we as believers, if we are believers, that we belong to the kingdom of God. That we're a witness. And as a witness, we, our testament is to Jesus Christ. That is the testimony that we want to have. Um, and so a lot of times we put a lot of energy in testimony. You know, we talk about us in our testimony. And the testimony that we need to have is of our Lord. 
I was jump down into uh, Psalms, Psalms and one nineteen, and one o four verse through the one o six verse. So it's Psalms one nineteen, one o four through one o six verse. I love Psalms 119. It's a good chapter in there. I love it. It's up full of a lot of stuff. But here in 104, it says, Through thy precepts, I get understanding. The writer is talking about through thy precepts, through, through thy uh, standards, principles, I get understanding. He says, therefore, I hate every false way. Verse 105 says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. The piece in here that I want us to focus on is thy word is a lamp unto my feet, thy word, thy word. The word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I need, we, we must have the word. And then I, just to keep the end of perspective of where we, where we are, you know, I got here in first John one in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. Jump back up into Psalms 119. Thy word, what word? The word from the beginning that already existed. The word was with God, the word that was God. That word, what word? That word. It is a lamp. Who's a lamp? God is a lamp, what? To my feet and a light to my path. The word is what we have need of. The word of God is what we have need of. In the beginning was the word. He already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He, verse two, he existed in the beginning with God. Who existed in the beginning with God? The word. Jesus Christ, our Lord, existed with God in the very beginning. God created everything through who? Through him. Who? The word. And nothing was created except what? No, by him. No, through him. Nothing existed in this world unless it came through Christ. Now, I got just made my whole afternoon when I read that. He took me to verse 105 in Psalms 119. And he said, the word is a lamp unto my feet. And then light unto my path. And then he showed me down here in the beginning that that word already existed. And that that word was with God. And that that word was God. And that he existed in the beginning with God. And God created everything through that word. And nothing was created except through that word. For all of that made me think that everything thing, everything hinges on Christ. Everything hinges on Christ. He is our need, our guide. There was nothing I'm reading in the word that was created except through him. God created everything. Everything had to travel that way. Everything that was created had to come through Christ. Here it says here, it says, uh, verse four, the word gave life to what? Everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The word, where was the word? At the beginning, already existed. Where was the word? Was with God. Where was the word? Was God. And God, and in the beginning, he created, it was existing in the beginning with God. The word existed with God. 
And God created everything through that word and nothing was created except through that word. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought life to who? Everyone. We have to be careful not to highlight ourselves as if we're the focus point. This is what the Lord has given me tonight, Romy, because the word witness is what I want us to focus on tonight. We are all witness. But the word that we need to focus on is witness to what? What are we witnessing? Because I know the first thing we like to do is we like to jump to that scriptures that, you know, we're made over some is by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. We like that. That makes me a witness. But I'm going to show you even in that scripture that everything goes back to Christ. All of our witness, all of our uh, account as to to uh, our believers, like when we are out canvassing, when we're out telling the good news of Jesus Christ, everything has to come through him. There is nothing about my life that I need to share with the world that doesn't bring people to Christ. I, I got a note here because uh, in this scripture when um, the Lord gave me about the word being in the beginning with God every, and that God created everything through him. That, that, that told me from the beginning, God already knew that we was going to be a falter and a failure from the beginning. He already knew that that in the beginning that Adam and Eve was going to mess it up and that it was going to come down through the, the generations just the way it did. He already knew this in advance and from the beginning, he already had a fix-all for our mess-up. He already had a fix-all for what? For our mess up. So when he created the earth, you know, when he said, let there be light, see, all of that, he already had a plan. All of that came through Christ. When the, when the animals were, 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 were flown, that came through Christ. When Adam and Eve hit the sea, that, he said, let us go make man. That came who? Through Christ. He says, there was nothing created except through him, through Christ. And here the light shines in the darkness. It says here the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God, this is the part I'll get to. About the witness. We cannot be a true witness of God and leave out Christ. Everything that God did, he did through Christ. We can't be a witness to the world and tell our sob story and tell our sad story, our falters and our failures, and somehow make people feel like it's okay that you have been there too. This must come, our testimony must come through Christ. In other words, whatever falter and failures that I have had, if my testimony is it that Christ has delivered me, then I need not speak. I can't give people a okay pass to make the same mistakes that I have made and that it's okay because Christ delivered me. My testimony must be that Christ delivered me from me. Not that you have to follow my path and that Christ can deliver you too. It's that Christ delivered me from me. I said it, Lord. I said it. I'm... Let's go down to my notes here. Our everyday failures and sinful demonstrations should not be, it, sh it should be like a hot stove. Our failures and our mishaps and our sinful demonstrations, it's like a hot stove. What we cannot do is embrace the hot stove. Although I have learned that the stove is hot and that will harm me, I never once embrace the hot stove. And the Lord said, this is, this is what we do. We take upon ourselves to testify 
of our failures and our faults. We embrace them as if they, it, it's okay that I, that is my life or that is my history, not recognizing that it's a stove that I should have learned from and, sh- and that I should learn from and not embrace. I can't make people feel okay about their sinful demonstrations either. My testimony is only the testament of Jesus Christ. The woman that was caught in adultery, when he told her to go and sin no more, her testimony is not that uh, I, 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 I'm a, an ex-adulteress. Her testimony is that Jesus Christ forgave me of my sin. That becomes her testimony. She brings everything back to Christ. She never once demonstrates or shows forth pity for where she came from. We can't show forth pity for where we come from. And to embrace someone in, the, in where they are at that moment is not what God wants us to do. He wants us to show that the, with Christ, we can be lifted from that place. We, don't, we can't embrace and, 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 and pet it, the place in where we are coming from. As a witness, my witness is to Christ and what he has done on the cross. There's a scripture that says in John, let's go to John. John 12, that's what I put the call when we came in. John 12. He says here, 32, that's where I'm going. Uh, Let's go to third. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Go up one more. Let's go up to uh, 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came the voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And he said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This is right before Christ is crucified. Right before uh, uh, when when he goes to Calvary. He's letting them know, you know, that that this this is coming. He says, but the the focus is going to be, but if I, you know, if I am the one lifted up. I like that part where he paused and he says, and I come. If I, I emphasize again, and if I be lifted up from the earth, you know, if I be raised up to be crucified, if I be shown, if I be uh, uh, raised up and, and, and take this position of, of hanging on the cross, bearing the sins of the world, he says that he will draw all men unto him. What is our witness? To bring people to Calvary. To tell people about Calvary. To be the witness that Jesus Christ is the only answer to whatever our situation is. Although we have testimony, because I I read it when he said, you know, know, we're made overcome. But even that was about a fight in the heavens. This is about Satan and, and his battle to try to take over. The enemy had a plan and a plot. To be raised up above where he was supposed to be. And old Michael to us. Now we're not about to have this. There was a war in the heavens. And old buddy got cast down to the earth. See but at the end. Even in that scripture. Verse 17. Let's go to that. Let's go to that scripture. Verse 17 of Revelation. Like that's where I'm going to be. I was just reading on this stuff. It just made my heart happy. It says in the dragon, go to, uh, go to, uh, chapter 12 
of Revelations. And it starts with the 11th verse. And it says, And, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their, their own lives unto death. And then I jumped over here to verse 17 because this made sense to me. It says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandment of God. And have the testimony. What's the testimony? The same one back here? The same one in verse 11? That, that they overcome by the blood of the Lamb? See, Jesus is the testimony. See, sometimes we get caught up in thinking it's our little testimony about what we done been through in our life. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everything goes through Christ. Here in verse 11, it says, and they overcame by what? By the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Testimony of what? Go back to verse 17. Verse 17 says the testimony was which kept the commandments of God that had the testimony of what? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the testimony. Anything that we have gone through at the end, Jesus set me free. Jesus is the reason that I'm no longer held uh, at, at, at ransom for what I have done. It was the blood of the lamb that set me free. It was the, it was the payment that Christ did on Calvary that gave me my freedom. This is the testimony that we tell uh, 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 women who have uh, prostituted. We, this is the testimony we tell that, that when someone has given their body to, uh, to the world to be used. Uh, this, is the, this is the testimony that we give when we say, I, every time I open my mouth, it was a lie and no truth was in it. This is the testimony that we give to, to those that hear our words and, and know that we have been in a place of darkness. That we have been corrupt. That we had anger. And ill feelings that we was a discord sower and all of these things. Whatever our practice was, our testimony is this. It was the blood of Jesus Christ that set me free from the penalty of paying for that. I think we are getting confused and this is how I think sometimes we even build in ministry over the fact of where we have come from. It's almost a boasting sin sometimes if we don't watch it. It's like a person that tells that, you know, I, 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 I had 177 ex-lovers in my life. You know, I was one notch after another on my belt. You know, I could nod like the wind and nobody would ever. See, it, it sounds like a boast, but it's, where's the testimony? The testimony ain't true until you tell. How did you come out? What happened? What brought you from that place to this place? And everything must come to Jesus Christ. If we're not testifying of the blood of Jesus, we're not doing the testimony. We're not a witness. This is what God was talking to me about this afternoon. We got to shift out. We got to be a true witness for God. Because if we don't watch it, we'll glorify where we've been. And God won't get the glory. We we'll just simply embrace the hot stove. We'll cuddle the hot stove, injuring ourselves over and over and over again. But the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, she talked about how Jesus set her free. I'm sure that had to be a testimony. I'm sure she had to tell him about the man who, who, who told her, go. I, I, I have no, 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 no condemnation for you as well. Go and sin no more. I'm sure the one that was by the, uh, the pool that, that wanted to step in, but that for some reason found himself laying there. I'm sure his testimony was how Jesus raised him from that bed of affliction. I'm sure he talked about how Christ did this and Christ did that. There was no glory in the fact that he lay by that pool. There was no glory for the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, how she gave herself to a man that was not her husband. I'm sure there was no glory in that for her. 
I'm sure that the man whose eyes were open and the, and, and the man that was healed of leprosy, I'm sure when he told them about what had happened, I know he talked about the man named Jesus. Are we a true witness? Are we testifying of the goodness of Christ? Or are we glorifying where we have been brought from? We got to become a true witness. Here, uh, verse 6 of, of uh, John, in that first chapter, John, uh, John uh, the first chapter started with verse 6. It says here, God sent a man. God sent who? He sent a man. John the Baptist to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of what? His testimony. What's his testimony? Talking about the light? Talking about the one that's coming? The one he ain't fit to tie his shoes? See, John never made it about him. John always talked about the one that was coming. That was his testimony. He was a witness. This is what it says here. God sent him. God sent him with a testimony. And it was to speak of the son, Jesus Christ. Here it says in verse 7, to tell the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. Verse 8 says, and John himself was not the light. See, we got to be careful not to be glorified. There was many times where John could have been mistaken because he was a holy and a righteous man. He could have been lifted up someplace. John could have been elevated someplace. But John kept it right there where it was supposed to be. I'm a witness. I'm a testament to who is to come. I'm not that one. The one that's coming, I ain't fit to tie his shoes. He was a testimony. He was a witness to Jesus Christ. And I think we need to get back to calling Jesus' name more often than ours. I think we need to get back to calling that it's because of Christ. And what he has done on Calvary. It's because what he, what he sacrificed on the cross. That has put me even in the position to be able to say what I'm saying and doing what I'm doing. Verse, uh, verse 8 of that uh, second part. It says John himself was not the like. It says in, in uh, semicolon. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. If that's not a simplified way of saying, he didn't focus on himself. He didn't focus on the fact that he was a full run. He didn't focus on the fact that he was a godly man. He didn't focus on the fact that he was uh, 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 called by God. He was focused on the fact that he was to testify of the one to come. He said it was that he was simply, see, no glory with that. See, there's nothing wrong with just being a simple witness. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. That's it. Us preachers, don't be high and lifted up. We're a simple witness, son. Come on. I know we got a whole lot that we think we're entitled to because we've been called, but the fact of the matter is we're just a simple witness. What are we a simple witness to? To Jesus Christ. To the one and truly only Savior. It says here in verse 9, the one who is the true light, one who gives light to everyone, was, uh, was coming to the world. That's our, that's our witness. That's our testimony. Oh, I can tell you all the stories that it takes to, to, to fascinate people, to get people to put up. To, I, if I was to get, uh, get my little uh, personal book out and start just reading my personal biography of where I've been, I can have this live up to I ain't no, I how many people in Columbus have the screen lit up. We just try to hear where I be. But it's not really important about where I be. All I can tell you is this, a wretched woman that I have. It was because of the blood of Jesus Christ that saved me from my destructive way. I was a woman head in hell. And the blood of Jesus, the fact that I had enough sense to accept his sacrifice and what he done on the cross is the only thing that got me on that train. 
I'm a witness to that. I'm a witness that my heart ain't the same. I'm a witness that my mind ain't the same. I'm a witness that Christ has uh, put in my heart the heart to love people. Even those who don't even want to love me back. He's done those things. It is because of him and him alone. I'm a witness to that. My testimony is that God saved me from a burning hell. From eternity from him by sacrificing his son. Oh, I thank him every day for it. Because there are many that are not going to be. God is the way to destruction. But now is the path to righteousness. And few will find it. I'm just thankful that the Lord has allowed me to find it. That I was in my mind enough to even accept him as my Lord and my Savior, Jesus. See, my testimony is this, that Christ saved me from a place that I didn't want to be. He didn't make it for, for mankind. Hell was, was prepared for the Satan and his fallen angels. It was never, ever supposed to be for us. Our testimony and our witness ought to be to that. That I am no longer a participant. For the, for, the, uh, for the gates of hell. I'm no longer a participant for the fire and the brimstone. I'm no longer that. I'm a witness. I can testify of Jesus Christ and the love that he had for us, that he gave his only begotten son, that God gave his only begotten son for us. Here in this scripture, I got this one part here that I had to go back. I got a note here. I said, our failures are not a highlight, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, it allows us to be redeemed from the penalty of our failures. That's our testimony. Whenever we speak of anything of our life, if we're trying to get people to understand that they too can cross over, we will never highlight our failures and our falters and make anyone feel okay about the same failure and falter. We don't have that authority. But what we can do is say, but the blood of Jesus is big enough to bring you over to the other side as well. It brought me over and it can bring you over. But never once do we want to make people, it's okay, I fell in that area too, you, it's okay. It's never okay. Touching the stove is not okay. It's hot. It's going to hurt you. And if you touched it, I'm sure you've got a burn. I'm sure you've got a wound. But I want to tell you about a man. One who can deliver you and set you free. One that can heal your hurt. Yes. Deliver you from your arms. Testify about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Witness to his power and his delivery power. Tell the world that Christ is the way and the only way, the truth and truly only light. The scriptures he has given us clarity in it from the beginning that Christ has always been our only answer. Starting back in Psalms when he said the word is a lamp. Christ is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And I love the part that says, and I have sworn and I will perform it and I will keep thy righteous judgments. As a witness of Christ, as one who has been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, the true testimony is my life, my witness, my witness in, in word and my witness in deed. I should truly be the love of God in the earth. I should truly be the peace of God in the earth. I should be the place that people find comfort in the earth. Because through Christ Jesus, we're able to deliver all those things. By testimony, by, by letting people know that Christ has these things to deliver to them as well. And out of my mouth, I can give the blessings. To deliver to them this thing of cold peace, this thing called comfort, this thing called love. Yes.
we have a choice to keep and a God to glorify. We have no place to glory in ourselves. We have no place to take pride in where we have come from. My only boast is in Christ. Our only witness is to him. We are be like uh, Jonathan Baptist. I'm going to tell you of the man. I'm going to tell you of the man who's able to save and deliver and set the captive free. I'm going to tell you of him. Weren't you uh, a, a person that did this, that, and the third? I was, but, but don't worry about that. Let me, let me tell you about what Jesus did for me, how he set me free. How he changed my mind and regulated my heart. How he brought me from a place of lowliness to a place where I can lift my hands in the sanctuary. Let me tell you about that. This ought to be our words. Hallelujah. Not to build ourselves up to think we are something that we're not. As men and women of God, we got to truly tell people. About our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. A lot of times people are hinging themselves on us as human beings. That's how come they get let down. And that's how come they end up falling and breaking. Because we have hinged people on our words. We haven't turned them over. We haven't been a witness. We got people thinking it's in us that they can have their being. You can make it because I can make it. No, you can make it because Jesus Christ. Not you can make it because I can make it. You can make it because Jesus Christ, your deliverer, will keep you in perfect peace. He will keep you when you don't want to be kept. He will keep you because he's a keeper. Because if I fall, you fall with me. If it's hinged on me, don't 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 don't, don't invite people to 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 follow. Uh, if in, in the steps of you in every as long as you following after Christ, but the moment you're not following after Christ, if people are hands on you, they fall in the pit too. Keep people's eyes on Christ. He says to be that that's the true witness. The true witness is not of men. I'm gonna grow up and be a woman of God like don't grow up and be a woman of God like me. Put your hope and your trust and your faith in God. And his son, Jesus Christ, and all that he has done. And whatever good you may see in me, or whatever good you may see in anyone else, oh, don't give it to their account. There's no good thing in us. It doesn't dwell in us. The only good thing in us is Jesus Christ. It is him and him alone. It is by him and him alone. It is, it is and this is the thing. We truly got to put it on mind. Who we serve? Who's, who, who's leading us? Who's the light and the light? Who's showing you your way? It says the word. The word is a lamp. Who's the word? Oh, he was with God. He was God. He always has been, and always will be. Who's the word? In the beginning. Everything that was made and created came through the word. But, mm. the light shines in the darkness. I your light. And we have read that John says in verse 8, John himself was not, not the light. John is not the light. And sometimes maybe that's why people can't see Christ. Because he's not with us like that. He said the light shined in the darkness. And so if this darkness keeps showing up, 
If darkness is all around, if darkness is overtaking you, then let the light shine. He said, John says, I'm not the light. I know we got that little song, this little light of mine. Oh, ooh, maybe that's the problem. He said, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Darkness cannot extinguish the light. The only time darkness can extinguish the light, the light has to decide not to be there. We, we actually turn down the light. We actually resist the light. We go to the darkness. John says, and I'm not the light. So everyone that might believe because of this testimony, he tells about the light. Verse, verse 6, John says, uh, God said, I sent a man. God sent a man named John the Baptist to tell what about the light? So that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John only had one testimony. He only had one to speak of. His whole purpose was to speak of Jesus Christ. Fulfilling that purpose. Sometimes we try to feel like we got to have a build on something. In order to fulfill, no, you might have one thing to do. John did one thing and one thing well. He talked about Jesus Christ and the coming of Jesus Christ. One that he was preparing the way for. See, all, all John did was just, just keep the roadways clear. Don't let nothing get on the roadway because the, the king is coming. John just cleared the path. That's, that was his purpose. He ain't trying to get on the sideline or build this little thing. He ain't trying to, oh, you want to have your own ministry? No, John said, I'm clearing the path. That's my only job. Yes, sir. For the one that's going to come. We sometimes, we don't know how to clear the path to somebody. As soon as we start clearing the path, somebody said, oh, you know, you preach pretty good too. Oh, well, I'm going to be on me on those. No, clear the path. Sometimes you just got to know your purpose. He didn't, he didn't count it robbery. He didn't count it robbery that he wasn't the light. That he wasn't the shot. That all the attention wasn't on him. And when Jesus showed up on the scene, he shared no attention with none of it. Yeah. Yes. Quite bad. John the Baptist, I don't think he even found him robbing. He'd give his head. Oh, he could have did it. He could have turned back and decided, you know, oh, I, I, okay, I, I, I won't do this anymore. I won't do. John had no problem with take the head because John's purpose was fulfilled. He just cleared the path for his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He fulfilled the purpose. Had that that's family. They were family. Jesus and John, they were family. That's it, cousin. You, you know, you get family members now. One trying to raise up, you know, who you think you is. You're not no better than nobody else in the family. Who you think that, that. So sometimes we in the family, it, it, you a path clear for the one that God has sent. Because it's purpose. John had no problem with his purpose. He knew he wasn't the light. He knew he needed the light. He testified of the light. God want us to testify of the light. To make it known that there's no power in the, in the preacher without the light. There's no power in the evangelist without the light. No power in the prophet. Because the, the, there's going to be many going to do great things. Great things. Prophesy. At the end of the day, he might tell them, depart from me. I didn't know you. You wouldn't a, you wouldn't a testify of me. You didn't know me. I, I refuse. I refuse to work these deals. To get to heaven gate. And he depart from me, work of it. I refuse. I'll testify of the of the love of God. I will testify of his goodness. I will testify of him. And if 
by any way my story might help somebody, I want you to know this. Every dark path I've ever been on and every dark path I've ever traveled, it was God. His only son and the sacrifice of him that gave me a way out. And to that is the only testimony I have. If you want the dirt, that's fine. Some folk only want to know my dirt, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, the only one that was able to clean that dirt up was Jesus Christ. Come on. I take no shame. I had to let go of my old man. He has died. She has died. The I, she will not be resurrected. She, she with Christ and raised up with my Lord Savior Jesus Christ. I want you to understand this. I'm a witness of the power of God. I'm a witness to my Lord Savior Jesus Christ. I'm a witness to the Holy Spirit and that He can change from the inside out. I'm a witness. I'm going to testify. I'm going to tell the world. I want you to join me, though. I want you to join me in testifying about the goodness of Jesus Christ. I want you to testify of the power of his blood and how he's able to cleanse us from our old ways and save us and redeem us from a burning hell. A lot of people say, well, that shouldn't be the main reason. What other reason is that? I don't want to be separated from God. That's all hell is. Hell is being separated from the presence of God. What else would I not want to be saved from? What is greater than that? What's worse than that? Nothing. Yes. Heaven by home. God says to tell us, be a true witness. Be a witness of Christ. Tell the world about him. Take the focus off of us. Take the focus off of our, even our history. All we need to know is that Jesus Christ died on the cross. All we need to know is that, that whatever your sin is, you know, we like to focus on the big ones. But if your, if your thing was secret discord, see, that nobody knew it, and you just... They just sneakily around this sowing discord and nobody really knew that you was doing that. You still need Christ. You still need God to deliver you. You still need to save you. If you lived as a hermit on an island and never harmed nobody but yourself, you still need a redeemer. That is the word. That is the message. That is the testament. That we as the believers of the kingdom need to be dis displaying, demonstrating, showing in word and in deed. Yes, to God be glory. His dominion forever and ever. I thank God tonight for this word because it's kind of a refocusing for me. Because we can get caught up. We get caught up sometimes in um, the cares. We do a kingdom work without the kingdom. We do in God's work and God didn't see it. Because when he says, it says he tells about the light. The one he says is telling us about the light. So if your message is not to the light, it's not pointing the way to Christ, check your message. Make sure that your words, like I, I'm really getting this, this, uh, this state where we have to back off of the, the, um, I hate this words, um, haters. That ain't God. And although it's popular, it's not, it's not God. Not in the kingdom. If my brother, brother or sister 
is a hater toward me. Don't I want to help them not do that? Because of one thing. Because I know the light would not be pleased with that. And if I'm of the light, if I'm representing the light, I can't possibly be okay with my brother or sister being a hater toward me or someone else and not want to help them not be there or whatever it is that they're doing. I can't be, I can't be okay with that. Poof. Poof. I'm pulled to this because the enemy will busy us with no, without, with, 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 with the plan of fruitless work. In the name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, who has been delivered from the enemy's hand? Or do people just feel okay about their simple nature and where they've been? Well, I, 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 I was a whole mother, and so if you was a whole mother, don't worry, God is good. God is good. But what he says is that whole mothers have a place in the fire. So I don't want you to feel good about that. I want you to tell you, I want to tell you about a man named Jesus who delivered you from whole mother. One that will, that, that won't condemn you, that will, that once you have accepted his gift of no condemnation and his acceptance of your, of, of your repentance. He will send you on your way and say, go now sin no more. Mm. Not that we all was homemongers and that's, and that's the thing of the day. No. Let's tell people a way out. Let's, let's show them the light. Let's point them in the way of the light. Let's give people a, a, a way out of where they come from. Let their history be that. Spoil to God be glory. I have one thing to say at the end of this. Do you know Jesus? Do you know he would depart if you sin? Do you know what he did for your Calvary? Hell is real. And the devil had no problem with us playing church. Playing ministry. Playing helping people. He ain't got no problem with that. Do that all day. He'll, he'll give you stuff to help you do that. But when you start really helping people out of the, the muck in the heart, when you really start helping people raise up and, 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 and go to the Father for repentance, oh, that's when you're doing the work. That's when you're making differences in people's lives. Oh, yeah, it don't take anything to sit back and talk about it. But what are we doing about it? What are we what are we doing to make a difference in the lives of people? And and, and look, I don't don't give me another bar, so I'm good. If I stink in heaven bound, that'd be all right. It's okay. But they don't give me a bar of soap and then watch my soul go to hell. Come on. We gotta rise up better than this. We gotta be a better witness. We gotta be a true witness. True witness to what? To Jesus Christ. Everything goes through him. There was nothing that was created. Nothing that was created that did go through Jesus Christ. God created everything through him. Surely we can't get to this side and think we can do it without. And don't think we have no power, no greatness in us. That's going to supersede that. Know our purpose. Know our purpose. Do your jobs. Do what God has called us to do. And that's to redirect people back to God. Keep Christ lifted. He'll do the drawing. We don't have to create all of these little things. We don't have to do all these little fancy tricks. He says, if I be lifted, that means if I be put up, Christ raised on Calvary. If that's all that had to happen. And he'll do the trial. All I had to do is tell people about what Christ did on the cross. 
If I be lifted, tell as many people as you can, he was lifted. Put it in there. He was lifted. If I tell people he was lifted for them, he says, I'll draw. <laughs> he was lifted. He was raised up. He was lifted. He says, I'll do the rest. All you have to do is tell about what I did. I'll do the rest. No, you ain't got to have no horse and pony show. I'll do the rest. No, no separation. I'll do the rest. He was lifted. Yes. Father, we thank you this evening. If there's anyone who will watch this or is watching this that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, Lord, I ask you to just touch them right now. Touch their heart and soften their heart. Let them understand the, the price that was paid on Calvary. One that you, 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 you willingly, willingly gave your life for. You knew we would not be able to pay the price of sin. You knew we would never be able to, to pay for the wrong that we have done. And you willingly got on the cross and allowed them to torture you and mutilate you. And then you gave up the ghost, having taken all of our sins. Cleanse us through your blood that was shed there. In the grave you stayed. Rising up again with the power of everything. Woo! <laughs> Having redeemed us from the enemy's hand and presented us before our Father. And all we must do is just acknowledge that. Acknowledge what you have done on the cross for salvation to be out. Just confess our faults and ask for the repentance. And you say, we'll say. And so, God, if there's anyone tonight who has made that confession, I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. Welcome you to the kingdom of God. No, it's not no big old drawn out thing. The, the thief on the cross just said, remember me. He knew he was sorrowful in his heart. He just said, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. Lift it up. He says, here, draw. All I want to do is my purpose. I just want to tell people about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what he's done for me. I don't want to have no beef. I don't want to have no heartache. I don't want to have no anger, no strife, no, 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 no back and forth. It's just, life is too short. We have but a short time. We have but a short time. And while the time that we have, let's be busy about the Father's business. Let's do what he has called us to truly do. Take the focus off of us. It's not about us being great, being seen, being known, being for, being fulfilled. Nothing. It's about Christ. Testifying of who he is. Until I see you all on Sunday, just know I love you. Be blessed. Continue to be a witness.